Our school teachers often leave an indelible impression in our lives, and at Spine Road High in the Western Cape, Khafiza Ismail is that person for her students. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to this week's Anur the Light. We got to spend some time with this incredible woman who goes above and beyond the call of duty to bring you this story. Technological advancement has transformed every aspect of society, from the way we learn and work to the way we play. For teachers, this has meant adapting to new and untested waters, a challenge that innovative educator Hafiza Isma Lashar has taken to heart. Well, I've always been quite inclined to teaching. My father was a teacher. Um, my uncles were, uh, my one uncle was a teacher as well. And my grandparents were also teachers, some madrasa teachers for that matter. So I think genetically I was created to be a teacher. I think I just have such a passion for the literary word. I, for art and photography and uh, the written word is, it capacitates all we are as human beings. and. Everything that we know, whether it is our faith, whether it is our, our humanity, it's all linked to what we say, how we communicate. So communication and that level of collaborating who we are as human souls has always been something that I have been enthusiastic about and passionate about. Hafiza has been teaching for the past nine years, continuously seeking ways to enhance the interest and enthusiasm of English for her learners, capitalizing on learners' exposure to social media and the internet. She uses 25 laptops and smart boards assigned to her to make electronic resources available to her learners. I believe in the holistic development of our learner. I've always had that, um, that inclination in terms of how I purpose myself as an educator. I believe that I have the key role to ensure that my learners are able to walk outside my classroom and be global citizens. I wanted to create a world for my learners, that, that the digital world that you know, they are so consumed with digital technology and um, social media and online communities. And I wanted to sort of emulate the world in which they live in and show them that you know that, that the internet per se and digital media is not, does not just necessitate entertainment, but can also necessitate education. And because of this, I wanted to also create a more enthusiastic approach to English as a subject, since it's such a challenging subject for most learners, particularly in the areas that I have taught. And so with regard to that, I wanted to bring about more interaction in the classroom. So I would present them with videos or video lessons. I would present them with audio readings. I would present them with um, the, the presentations that I would create for them in terms of analyzing poetry. I would also annotate for them, teach them how to do the annotations. So the annotations are also the analytical thinking as well as the critical thinking. And it also enhances the creative capacity as it enhances their memory as well. Hafiza makes use of multimedia PowerPoint presentations, animated videos and audio recordings of her classroom lessons for students to access later. These materials are saved to her blog where students are able to access learning resources for revision and studying purposes at any time. Having used the, the blogging has really helped in terms of learners being able to download material for them to study from. Normally I use PowerPoint, present, uh, PowerPoint Microsoft PowerPoint, I also use slide shares and I've also create, used the software, online software that's called Powtoon, sometimes just to create an animated dynamic for the learners just so that if there's dynamics within your learning, the learners become more receptive to it. Um, so in terms of the presentations, I, um, I insert multimedia like video content, so instead of me reading the poem, which is a normal, what, the, what learners are, are used to, I would have the, them listening and watching this video of 
the poem. And it actually pulls them into the poem. It's a stronger force because the, the ambience of the, of the reading in itself creates the tone of the poem. So the learners have a stronger understanding to it. So they become more open to the suggestion of the poem. And in that respect, the critical thinking also enhances because if they can feel something, they're able to respond to it. The results speak for themselves. In 2014, the school received the highest average in English home language in Mitchell's Plain and achieved the first ever 100% pass rate in grade 12 in the Mitchell's Plain area. As recipient of the National Teaching Award for Excellence in Technology, Enhanced Teaching and Learning, Hafisa has pioneered the digital classroom. It was an extremely overwhelming feeling and experience. I, I did not expect it. It was, I sat there, uh, I sat beside my husband and I, as they were calling up the third um, nominee and the second one, and I, I, I sank when I saw my picture come up. I was like, oh my word, I couldn't believe it. I walked up and I just, I just made, I, I made dua and I, I just said shukr. And at the same time, as I was walking to the platform, I, I recall the moment at school, yeah, at Spandard High School, it was five years ago when I started at the school. Mr. Najah asked me, um, what, where do you see yourself in five years? And as I was walking up that platform, I realized it's five years later. And all I said to him in that interview is that I wanted to make a mark. And I stood there, as I'm walking, I had a moment, I, pa I paused for a slight moment, and I wasn't supposed to because it was on TV, <laughs> it was live. And I had this moment, I was like, it's five years later, I have just made a mark. And that moment of realizing your dream has come true, it, it was, it was awe-inspiring. I think it's, it's, it's amazing to work in an environment such as Ms. Ismail herself because she always encourages us to do better or to be better. And every day she leaves us with a certain note like to tell us that if you be good to the world and the world will be good to you. And I think it's, it, it's amazing because the way she coordinates the class and s certain times we use color coordinating for uh, files, like a PDF files, and we just need to collaborate onto that so that we can learn and focus on our studying. And, but yeah, I think it's amazing to work in environments such as Masisma. Teachers are the unsung heroes whose efforts often go unnoticed, but whose contribution to society is immeasurable. With people like educator Hafisa Ismailisha leading the way, it seems like our future is in the best hands possible. Technology is constantly changing our world, and often for the better. Hafiza is a shining example of what can be done with the right mindset and attitude. Our Q&A section with Molana Zakaria Philander is up next. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Welcome to Q&A on An-Nur. My name is Molana Zakaria Philander. Our first question, I have just converted to Islam. Do I have to change my name and are there certain names which are recommended? We have received this question before and the answer is still the same in that it is not required for anyone who had embraced Islam to change their name. There is no requirement like that in the Quran nor in the prophetic guidance of our Prophet Muhammad There is, however, advice with regard to names and changing of names. The Prophet had advised that when a person has a name with a bad meaning, then that person should change their name. Good names are obviously the name of the Prophets, Muhammad, Ahmad, and the name of all the other Anbiya, or any other name that has a good meaning that a person can strive to live up to. Our final question is, what are the situations in which a promise may be broken? We know that breaking promises is one of the attributes of the hypocrites, but if a Muslim is unable to keep his promise for some reason that is beyond his control, what are the repercussions? Keeping a promise in Islam is extremely important. It is considered an amana. It is considered a trust. And it is very important that if a person had taken you into their confidence, that you do not divulge any information. There can, however, be certain circumstances when this trust may be broken. The circumstance would perhaps be when a person knows that if the person is going to keep this information, it will cause harm to the one who told you the information or it will cause harm to other people. 
If by keeping the information you will be causing harm to anyone, then it is important for you not to keep this information and to divulge it to the correct people, to the correct persons, so that remedial action can be taken so that no harm can be caused and so that harm can be averted. Other than that, it is extremely important for you to stick to your word, to be a good confidant and to keep the secrets of people as this is the requirements of amana and trust in Islam. That brings us to the end of this uh, segment of Q&A on Anno the Right. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. The KwaZulu Blind and Deaf Society has been serving the community for the past 80 years. We visited them to find out exactly what they do and how they improve the lives of the differently abled. The KwaZulu Natal Blind and Deaf Society has been serving the differently abled community for the past 80 years. With the singular goal of empowering the hearing and visually impaired, they have afforded these individuals opportunities to cultivate vital skills. The society had been in existence for 80 years this year. It started uh, in the days of apartheid in 1936 as a society to cater for the needs of uh, Indian blind people. Uh, and remained like that until 1990. It started also as a society for, for the needs of blind people only, but blind and partially sighted people. And then in, in the 1960s, uh, included the care of deaf people under its wing. It, that was because the Indian community was a small one and could not have a single organization for each and every uh, disability. And that's why it was decided to combine the two. The society started a school for the blind in 1955. I started there as a pupil in 1956 and then started several schools for, for deaf children um, in the 60s. Those schools still exist. The society strongly advocates for the right of every disabled person to be able to communicate, to understand others and to be understood. With the launch of their Talk Sign campaign, they aim to make sign language South Africa's 12th official language. So talk Sign is a campaign which we started a couple of years ago. And the best way to explain the campaign is for you to imagine a totally deaf person and their life experience in South Africa. The world is silent. And 95% of the time, there is nobody communicating with them. So that they really have no contact with the sighted world, except for what they see. So the idea is to make this world better for deaf people everywhere. So if you can learn signs, which say, hello, how are you, are you OK? Give them a little thumbs up and so on, and speak for two minutes. It's better than nothing. And the hope is that in 20 or 30 years, and we understand it will take a long time, every deaf person who goes anywhere will be able to have in his or her day, even, even if on one day, 10 people say, hello, how are you? Are you OK? To a person who is deaf or hard of hearing, the KZN Blind and Deaf Society recognizes that independence and access to economic activities is not automatically lost for the hearing and visually impaired. An array of training courses and services developed here has assisted thousands of differently abled people to reach their full potential. These people are given employment and a chance at a sustainable income to manage their disabilities and live a comfortable life. I'm the uh, administrating officer. I do the banking. I do the uh, report of the minute. I organize all the preparation for the meeting. I work with the blind, deaf, deaf blind, and mighty disabled. I help them. And also, I do most administrative work. With most experience, I have worked with the most in uh, learning to learn about Braille. I love to work with the blind and deaf people. It's my heart goes to them. 
the society has a job placement as part of its program, the holistic program, in terms of the growth and development of a person who is either blind, deaf, or deaf blind. At the end of the day, we would want to see a person placed in employment. So very important to us is the training and, of course, the job placement. So we have a job placement officer whose responsibility it is to find employment for our clients in the open labor market. However, not all clients would be able to go into the open labor market without adequate training. So we have established the work center for the blind and deaf. And here we have it divided into two categories. We have a cane workshop that provides skills in basketry and cane products. Then we have the section where staff are involved in component assembly. So we have companies that outsource work to the KZN Blind and Deaf Society. To our clients, it is a work opportunity for them. It is a training ground. And our job placement officer is responsible to bring in the clients to the work center. He is also then responsible to ensure those that have reached a certain level in terms of their progress are now, find, are now found with work in the open labor market. So it is a cycle of training and development. The aim of our work eventually, and I don't know when we'll ever get there, is to ensure that all blind and partially sighted, deaf and hard of hearing people are able to live side by side with people without disability, contributing to society and being helped by society so that we can all live together without discrimination. More often than not, disability in our society is negatively perceived. Those with limited abilities are pushed aside and excluded from society. The inspiring members of the KwaZulu-Natal Blind and Deaf Society have dedicated their lives to building a society that is inclusive of all human beings. Today's episode is all about inspiration and I'm truly honored to be sharing it with you. We're staying in KwaZulu-Natal for this week's travel segment. Halfway between Durban and Peter Maritzburg, half hidden behind trees, is the Umgeni Railway Museum at Inchanga Station. It has become the home of some of the best steam locomotives and is also the KwaZulu-Natal chapter of the Railway Society of South Africa. Changa Railway Station was a halfway station in, in the early years between Durban and Peter Maritzburg. And it was a stopover station for lunch on the trip to Peter Maritzburg from Durban and vice versa. Well, the station itself was built in 1892, so they've been uh, here since then. In Changa Station is in itself one of the best preserved stations that hark back to an era where steam trains was the best mode of transport available. The station has retained its Victorian architectural style implemented by the British. Uh, architecture along this line was North British Rail design, as Natal Government Railways had everything designed and built from uh, England, particularly North British Rail in Scotland. A group of volunteers spend their days restoring these trains to their former glory. Bookings are also accepted for the steam train rides that take place on a monthly basis. Durban is well known for its Indian cuisine, but a new restaurant has changed the dynamics somewhat of this history. Zambezi restaurant got a small but very interesting story behind it. When me and my husband moved to Durban, that is like two years ago, after a few months we started missing the proper Mozambican food and also the hospitality of Mozambican people. Why not we open a restaurant since we got experience in the food industry? The authentic Mozambican food, if you could see it, it's very simple. It's very easy food to do. The flavors of Mozambique are well-renowned and Shakila, who was born there, is bringing some of her own homemade recipes to the restaurant. Conclave you don't find in Durban, you don't find it anywhere in South Africa. But we got it. We have our signature dish as a, the Piri Piri Mozambican chicken. They must come to Zambezi and it's halal, it's strictly halal and uh, we do everything to please our, our um, customer. Uh, we want uh, them to be a family to Zambezi. 
Muslims in Durban are spoiled for choice as the ever-increasing restaurant scene caters to a wide variety of palates. For Shakila, this is a dream come true and the food will go down very well with discerning clients looking for something different. Water-based activities form a big part of what's on offer in Durban and one that comes highly recommended is fishing. In fishing we launch at, I would say, 5 a.m. and we do a trip off Durban um, up to up to Bolito side and we pull lures and try and catch different species. Uh, Dorados, tunas, uh, marlin if we're lucky, sailfish and, and barracuda. And we've been quite successful on all our trips. Setting out from Durban Harbour is a spectacle in itself as the charter boat weaves its way through huge tankers and cargo ships. One often doesn't have to go far before casting a line and seeing what's biting. We offer different types of cruises. We do mainly it's a harbour cruise and a sea cruise. Um, within the harbour cruise we offer a 30 minute, a 45 minute and a one hour, which just takes you around the harbour itself. Just gives you a bit of information about the Durban Harbour, a bit of background. Um, it's quite a relaxing cruise. People want to go out to the sea, then what we do is offer them a one hour 15 minute or a one hour 30 minute sea cruise. Fishing is known as one of the most relaxing sports and often quite rewarding. What better way to spend a lazy afternoon in the sun, rod in hand, waiting for the big one that hopefully won't get away and leaving you telling the tale. We do backline fishing as well, which is limited to one, on one kilometre from the shoreline. And then we do deep sea fishing, bottom fishing and game fishing as well. As I've said before, my bucket list just keeps on growing as we see more and more of this beautiful country. But that's it for this week. The show will be on YouTube in the next few minutes, so please tell your family and friends to watch it online. From me, Mara Mukwanda, Salang Hantle, Assalamu Alaikum. Touches my heart. Got me back to you, now oh Allah. Show me your beautiful way. Got me back to you, now oh Allah. Take me away from the darkness. Got me back to you, now oh Allah. Show me your beautiful way. Got me back to you. To change my way, have I prepared enough for the next life? I know that little time remains. Somehow I feel the light